Let's have a mani yekum. Now this word again appears here. Amani. What is amani? Wishful thinking. Well, we belong to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We shall have the intercession. We shall all be saved. We shall go directly to heaven, directly to paradise. Well, where has it been guaranteed in the Quran? Could you tell me, please? But this is amani. Lan tamasana naru illa yama madudat. Where in Torah have we given you that guarantee? Could you tell us? No. It's your amani, your wishful thinking. Nahu abna Allah wa hibahu. We are like sons to Allah. We are very loved by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We are beloveds of Allah. Has He said it so in any of His books? No. It's amani. Laisa bi amani yekum, O Muslims. Beware, nothing will be decided according to your wishful thinking. Wala amani ahlil kitab. Nor the amani of ahlil kitab. These amanis, these umniyats, these wishful thinkings, these false beliefs that you have concocted yourselves. Mai yamal su ay yujza bi. Whosoever commits something wrong, something bad, something ill and evil, he will be recompensed for that. This is the law. There is no exception to this law. Wala yajid lahu min dunni Allah waliyam wala nasira, and he will never find against the judgment of Allah, against the accountability of Allah, anybody to protect and anybody to help. No protection, no help. If you have done wrong, you'll have to face it. Man yamal suwan yujza bi, wala yajid lahu min dun Allah waliyam wala nasira. And again, here contrast as for the Muslims, wa man yamal min salihat, whosoever is doing good deeds, virtuous acts, min zakari na unsa, irrespective of whether he is a male or she is a female, wa huwa mu'min. But the condition is that she or he must be a mu'min. Good deeds there can be in the unbelievers also. They they can also found charitable institutions. They might they might be doing something good for the humanity. But if they don't believe in Allah, if they don't believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if they don't believe in the hereafter, when that good deeds and charities are going to be no good to them in the hereafter. So that is the condition. But whether he is a male or she is a female, it is, it is irrelevant. But man yamal bin salihat min zakarin wa unsa wa huwa mu'minun faulai ka yad khulun al jannah. These people will enter paradise, heaven. La yuzlamuna nakira, and they will not be wronged, even equal to the speck of a dead stone. وَمَنْ نَحْسَنُ دِيمًا مِمْنَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ And who can be better in religion than the one who submits his face to Allah? And because this face is the most respectable part of our body. What does it mean? He has submitted his whole self before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Face actually is the most important part of human body. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينَ مِمَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ Now here, most of the translators I find, they have committed a mistake. Muhsin here is not meant doing good to others. This is the higher level of Islam. Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Very fine level of Islam. Subtle level. High level. Where it is becomes Ihsan. As we find in Hadith Jibreel, which is called Umm Sunnah. First question: What is Islam? Number two: What is Iman? Number three: What is the Sun? Wallahu yuhibul muhsinin. When you know his religion becomes very fine, very beautiful. His character is very admirable. When he's praying from the depths of his heart, when he's loving Allah the most from the depths of his heart. What is the Sun? And the Prophet replied, "Anta bud Allah ka na ka tarahu, failam takun tarahu, fail na hu yarak." That you obey Allah, you worship Allah, as if you are seeing Him, or at least if you are not seeing Him, 
at least you should have the feeling that he is seeing you. فَإِلَّا تَكُونَ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ This is the Ihsan. فَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجَوْ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسَنٌ أَتَّبَعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا And he follows the millah, the method, and the way of Ibrahim. And Ibrahim was an upright person, absolutely pure in faith. Hanif, yaksu, upright, and pure faith. وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken Ibrahim as a friend. Now this is the highest degree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of Ibrahim as Khalil. Khullah in Arabic means very deep love. Khalil, you know, is much higher than Rafiq. Rafiq is a, you know, you may call Rafiq a colleague or a comrade. These things are, you know, at the level of Rafiq. But you know, Khalil, and let me quote here one saying of the Prophet that can give you a sub something, you know, what, what Khalil is in Arabic. The Prophet said, لَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا خَلِيلًا لَتَّخَذْتُ عَبَى بَكْرٍ خَلِيلًا If I could take anybody as Khalil for me, I would have taken Abu Bakr. Even Abu Bakr didn't reach that level. لَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا خَلِيلًا لَتَّخَذْتُ عَبَى بَكْرٍ خَلِيلًا so Khalil is a very high level. وَاتَّخَلَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا He is Abu Lambiya, the forefather of hundreds of prophets. All the prophets of the Old Testament, who are they? The progeny of Ibrahim through Ishaq. And then the final and complete messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rasul al-Kamil, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, a son of Ibrahim through Ismail. Inni jailuka linnase imama. That was one dimension. Inni jailuka linnase imama. And here, what takhad Allah Ibrahim khalila. In relation to the humanity, you are imam. In relation to me, you are my khalil. And in relation to the messengers of Allah and prophets, you are the father of so many prophets and messengers of Allah. That is the position of Ibrahim. That is why, you know, we invoke in Darood, in Salah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Walillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-lard. And to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and that is in the earth. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنٍ مُحِيطًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encompassing all the things. He has encircled as if everything, nothing is beyond his control. 